Hi, this is Elliot Haspel, and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about most effective ways to teach math vocabulary, and this comes from an article in Teaching Children Mathematics. What the authors talk about is that we have to think about teaching math terms in a couple of different ways. There are questions to ask ourselves as teachers. First, is the words that we're teaching new or old? Is this review or is this introducing new math terms? And then we need to think about what's the context in which we're teaching these terms? Is that new or is that old? And what they mean by context is the way you're setting up the problems that you're asking the students to solve. So they give an example of if you're teaching perimeter, a common perimeter problem that might appear in a textbook or that you might come up with on your own, might involve trying to find the perimeter of a farm. But there are words associated with that that not all students are going to be able to know what they mean if you haven't talked about farms before. So depending on what population you're working with and where you're located geographically, maybe your students wouldn't know words like wheat or crop or acre. Those may be unfamiliar words in this example. And if that's the case, then it's actually really important that we're previewing those words for students to begin with, even though they're not math-specific words, because if students are trying to figure out what in the world a field of, of grain is, they're not thinking about perimeter, they're not thinking about the math, they're getting tripped up by the context of the problem itself. And so, the authors say, if you do have an unfamiliar context, uh, think about either previewing the words ahead of time, or if it's not worth it to you, just change that context to something that's more familiar with them. Um, perhaps consider using something you're doing in another subject. So if you're studying uh, amphibians and lakes in a uh, science class, maybe you actually find the perimeter of the lake instead of finding the perimeter of a farm. Then, with the content, again, we have to ask ourselves, is this math concept, is this content new or is it old? Are we reviewing it? Are we introducing it for the first time? And if you're introducing it for the first time, the authors say, sort of ask yourself, can I actually lead my students to understand the math concept without using the specific math word? What that means is, for example, with a concept like multiplication, right, you don't actually need to use the word multiply to begin with there. You can say things like, okay, so if we have two groups of three instead of two times three, or two multiplied by three. You don't actually have to use multiplication terms to explain that. And you can actually lead your students to understand what multiplication is, and then say, now what we call this is multiplication. And the reason that that's better is because students have the concept to, to really tether the vocabulary word to, which research has shown really enhances uh, comprehension and retention of those academic terms. Now there are some concepts that you're just not going to be able to do it with. It might be hard, for example, to find ways to talk about perimeter uh, without using the word perimeter. Um, maybe you can, but that could be an example that if you don't feel like there's a way you can comfortably get students to understand what that is, then just go ahead and preview that at the beginning of the lesson. You know, today we're going to be learning about perimeter, and let's quickly go over what perimeter is, and then we'll see examples of it as we move forward. Now, Two other just sort of tips that they give about teaching math vocabulary. One is consider if the words have non-math meanings, which a lot of words do. So a perfect example of this is the word times. Uh, you know, in multiplication, obviously, it's a multiplication term. But in real life, or just non-math life, it obviously means plenty of other things. What, what times, you know, I'm going to see what times this movie is showing at. And so what they suggest is just have an explicit conversation with students. When else have you heard this word? When else have you heard the word right, for example, when you're talking about right angles? And just get that out there so that students won't be confused. Lastly, when you're doing actual reviews, so when you're not introducing new terms and you need to just review, refresh their memories, two things. First of all, do it quickly. You want to take the most valuable math time for real deep instruction. And review should be no more than five minutes at the very beginning of it, is what sort of research suggests is the most effective. Um, and also, if you can get that review into other parts of the day, if you can make it part of your morning message, if you can make it part of uh, you know, a lunch procedure, if there's some way to get the review of those terms um, in a way that's not taking time from math class itself, then that's all the better. So, again, if you're curious, all of this is on the full article write-up, um, but these are really just some tips to make sure that when you're teaching math vocabulary, it's as effective as possible. Thanks for watching, and happy teaching!